What is happening everybody? Thanks for checking out today's video. Today we're going to be taking this Polygon Cisco T7 out here on the trails. We're going to be putting it to the test, seeing what it's made out of, seeing how these components actually react and how well they actually perform to give you a good reference if you're going to be looking to purchase this bike in the future. Overall, I've been riding this thing for probably, I don't know, about two months now and I am loving this thing. And this is the 2022 version and it just looks awesome, feels awesome, and I hope you can tell from the video how awesome this thing is actually going to be. We're going to be using a GoPro this morning, so we're going to be behind the bars a little bit. We'll also be giving some side shots as I'm going down some of these trails to give you a reference of what it actually looks like when it's actually performing out on the trails. All right, guys, if you like videos like this, please hit that like button. Also, subscribe to the channel. We'd love to have you. Also, head over to my main YouTube page. Check out some of the videos I have over there. I also have a build video on this bike, how to build it from the ground up. Guys, the only mods I've done to this bike are just cosmetic. Uh, I've done the pedals. We upgraded to some needle bearing pedals. We put a fender on the front and some grips, and that is it. Everything else on this bike is completely stock the way it came out of the box. All right, so it's not gonna be changing the performance at all. And just to give you a reference, I did set the rear shock to 25% sag and the front fork to 35% sag. I'm 5'9", 185 pounds, and this is what works well for me. All right, guys, let's dive into this video and show you how well this thing performs out here on the trails. All right, there she is. This thing is looking good this morning. And man, are we gonna put this thing to the test? We got the GoPro all ready to go. We're gonna be giving some behind the bar footage. And this thing just looks sick, I will tell you. That color scheme, when I was buying this bike initially from the online store, I didn't know how well I was gonna like the color scheme, but man, having it here in person, this thing is just awesome. And I don't know, I just love it. It goes very well with just about everything. and It stands out. Because if you want to stand out, this bike is for you, I promise. Very bright colors. All right, guys, let's get it. We'll go up some of this techie stuff. So this thing does not have that much pedal bog. And I think it's because of that one piece pivot joint in the back. It really helps with no pedal bog. You know, if you have a two-piece linkage, sometimes you tend to have some pedal bog in the back. And these squabble tires are just digging in. All right, let's drop that dropper post. Oh yeah, straight down that techie stuff. Woo! Just playing around, hit that dropper post up. This thing does pretty great. You know, not all dropper posts really actuate that fast. So when you get one that does, it's pretty good. Just going over some of this techie terrain. I don't know how steep this actually looks on camera, but it's pretty steep. So this bike does give you the option to actually lock out the rear shock just to twist this knob. So right here's full lockout and that's fully open. Up here on the fork, it's kind of the same way, fully like this. Is your forks completely locked out, open, you know it's completely open. This thing works pretty good. Even the pedaling efficiency with that rear shock just left open is not bad. I didn't even have it closed out when I was going up that hill. It was uh, completely open. So this does have 150 mils of travel in this front fork. Look at that, it's pretty usable too. And this is at 35% sag. With this one piece pivot joint, I'm actually applying enough force to actually make it actuate that much, but you can tell right there, 
on that shock housing it's going down the shock tube a little bit how much it's actually working this rock shocks deluxe rear shock works really good i have no complaints as well as the rock shocks recon fork up front this thing i'm loving it so far all right I'll show you how well this dropper post actually works I think it works pretty good. Good enough for me anyway. And this one is made by TransX. See right there, TransX. Take it in. Yeah. This suspension just rolls over stuff very easily. Squirrely right there. This does have the four piston calipers up front, the two piston in the back. And so far these Tektros are working how I would want them to work. Let's see how the pedaling is up through here. Oh man, it's steep. Digging in. Here we go. There's some ruts right here. Oh shoot. The rut was a little bit deeper than I thought. Shouts right here. Really trying to get back on the bike. You know, that is one cool thing about this 27 and a half inch wheel is I can really get back on this thing and that wheel is not gonna hit me in the butt. I'm trying to feather these brakes. Pea gravel it could really be dangerous. And, uh, they just go through the gears really quick, and if you need to downshift, you can do three gears at once. So that really gets it down. So if you're about to go up a big incline, you can really downshift quick if you need to. I mean, this thing does have the through axles front and rear and that is just a great feature 
that once again not every bike in the two thousand dollar range had they still had those quick release axles which i have broke a ton of those things over the years mainly not because of the axle mainly because of the way the hub was but nonetheless still i don't like them as good as a through axle See how it does on these rocks. These big fat tires rolls over these things pretty easily. You know, it's not slipping down between some of the rocks. It's just kind of gripping onto the sides of a lot of two, out of a lot of the rocks, and it was going through them pretty easy. So let's check out the gearing on this thing. Now from bikes online they say they ship ready to go right out of the box with perfect shifting and i will say for the most part that's true but i did have to adjust the little barrel adjustment on the shifter up here a little bit to tighten the cable just a touch and that did help some but as far as messing with the rear derailleur i haven't even touched it really so you know if we got back there and started messing around we could probably come up with some perfect shifting. All right, with this one by 12 cassette in the back with the single chain ring up front, this thing offers you plenty of gearing options for going down most stuff, up most stuff. Listen to that cassette. I think it sounds pretty good, but I've never been a, a huge snob when it comes to cassette sounds or hub sounds. So we'll shift through a bunch right here. And with that one by 12, if you're used to having gears over here with your, your front chain rings, this is gonna be pretty cool. It almost seems like you're never gonna run out of gear options. I find myself mainly just using like one through six and that's about it. I haven't really went up any higher than that. Uh, but if you need to go up, they shift very quick. You can see it's, it's a little bit of roughness in that. But nothing too bad. All right, that's the gearing with this Shimano Dior set. Uh, you know, it's bulletproof. You're not gonna be going wrong with this. It's got that nice metal housing on the rear derailleur. And you know, it just works. Okay, the brakes, you saw some clips from the trail. But let's try out the rear brake right now. And you can see I have to st stop from trying to lock this thing up. They work that good. And that's what you'd expect out of, you know, a two piston rear brake caliper. This thing works pretty great. And then the four piston Tektro brakes up front. They really grab too. You gotta be careful with that one though. End up throwing you over the, the handlebars. Okay, we're gonna use both brakes in conjunction now. Look at that, I didn't even lock the front wheel up. So, for me at least, they grab very well and they work. Okay, so let's talk tires. The Schwable Hans Domp tires, these do come in a 2.6, which I think is a perfect match for this bike with that boost spacing. And with the overall mindset of being a trail bike, this thing really does help out this bike perform. Offers a lot of grip. You saw the clips for me going up those steep inclines. I'm talking, they are steep. And this thing is just digging in like nobody's business. The knobbies on this thing just really perform. Now I have heard that if you're using these wide tires in the mud, I don't really go through a lot of muddy conditions, but these tires I have heard do collect mud quite a bit and can create like a slick surface where it doesn't get the mud out of the treads. But not a case, but not the case for me. Mostly I'm on just hard packed rock trails, which can turn into some red clay mud from time to time. So what do I think about the handlebars? You know, the handlebars for me, I think are perfect. They're 
780 mils in width. They don't have much of a rise to them, just a slight rise. And you know, they feel solid to be, you know, the entity brand, which is kind of a lower end, honestly, in the quality. Uh, I took the grips off and even the bar ends look a little cheap and thin, but honestly, they're not too bad. They could be a lot worse. And the green accents make it look cool. You know, down the road, I may swap these out for something better. But for now, you know, they're lightweight and they're holding up for now. You know, maybe one crash into it will, you know, put them to the test and we'll see from there. But yeah, they're working now. And I did change out the lock on grips that come on this bike. They're not bad, but you know, it's easy to change a grip out. So I just went ahead and did that for some of these quirky grips, which I also really don't like these. So they're probably gonna get in place too. So that is one cool thing about lock on grips. You can change them out in less than 30 seconds and you got a new set on there. Now this entity saddle, this thing is really short. You can see, and I don't have huge hands, but my hand can fully extend across this thing. Uh, but it's kind of wide and it's not bad, but I do wish the center was a little bit hollowed out a little bit more than that. It's not really deep. So it doesn't relieve pressure in areas it's supposed to, but I guess for the price of this bike, being one of the most inexpensive full suspension bikes that you can get that actually has solid components on it, this isn't some mongoose or Schwinn bike, uh, but this thing actually performs and does come with some pretty good components like this Transax dropper post, butted up to this entity saddle. Yeah, it just works and I'm not gonna replace it as of yet. Now the pedals that come on this bike are not these Fookers. These are those Chester race face copies and these are just a needle bearing pedal. And I do strongly suggest, you know, maybe upgrading pedals in the future, but the ones that come on this bike aren't bad. They're, they are an aluminum alloy pedal that do have these screw in studs. So they do work, they are gonna perform, but they're not as smooth as something that you could get like these Fookers or the Chesters. And that's just to name a few. There's a ton of them out there. Now, one awesome feature I like about this bike is this stem. This thing is very short. The handlebar is right butted up next to the steerer tube there. And I really like this. I like the bars to be as close to that steerer tube as possible. And it just works for a good all around trail bike. And this stem works really good with these handlebars. Haven't had any complaints, haven't had anything slip. And I have torqued these down to the specifications in that owner's manual. And so far it's been working. This FSA headset right here is really smooth. And I haven't had any creaking or anything. I know other people said that this thing was creaking really bad out on the trails, but I haven't experienced that. The creaking you may hear right there, that's just the brakes. Uh, but overall, this headset seems very solid and haven't had any play in it, no wiggle, and I really like it so far. Okay, let's talk about this head tube angle. This head tube angle, and this is one of the reasons I bought this bike. As a full suspension bike goes, there's not a lot of options out there that are relatively inexpensive that have a head tube angle like this that is slack enough to be a good all-around trail bike. This bike has that slack head tube angle. And I really like that for the downhill stuff. It really keeps your bike stabilized at those higher speeds. It really gets that front wheel out in front and it works great for that. Uh, as far as slow stuff though, this thing is like driving a dump truck. This thing, you could not let go of the bars and pedal free handed with this bike. I mean, these things are just gonna turn because that wheel's so far out in front that, you know, it doesn't have anything holding it up. Usually if you have a bike that has, you know, a very upright head tube angle, that wheel can stay straight and it's gonna hold itself in line. This thing, you could tell just at slow speeds, it even sounds like a dump truck with these big swabbly tires. It even sounds like a dump truck with these big swabbly tires, but this thing ain't meant to be a concrete queen. This thing is meant to be a trail boss. So that's what it's made for. But just be aware, if you do plan on riding this thing on the hardtop, 
it is going to drive like a dump truck the rolling efficiency is not good at all so just keep that in mind when you're purchasing this bike so this rear derailleur is really nice it has the lockout feature to where you can stiffen this up if you need to and see that right there is in its loose non-locked out position and you can imagine that would have some chain slap if i was in a, a higher gear but we can actually flip this little switch and this thing stiffens up to where you almost can't even move it and that's going to eliminate that chain slap if you're out on the trails going down some of these rocky inclines and things like that or doing some jumps this thing isn't going to be slapping like crazy okay in closing here i hope this review uh ride test whatever you want to call it gave you a little bit of insight of what this bike can actually do and i do apologize i don't have any bike parks around me or any kind of really good trails i do plan on moving very soon to new mexico so we're going to be getting out and doing a lot of riding with this bike we do have a lot of mountain trails out there which i'm super stoked for and that's why i bought this particular bike is for some of those trail features out there uh, but this bike is awesome i don't think you can get a better bike sub two thousand dollars than this bike right here as far as the price goes and the features that you actually get with this bike and before i purchased this bike i did weigh in a bunch of different options uh, we had all kinds of other bikes and i'm not going to mention but around the same two thousand dollar price tag but some of them had more cons than this one did versus the pros so i just went ahead and went with this polygon siskiyou and I think it is just an awesome purchase. I love the Tektro brakes. Yeah, the Shimano MT-201s would have been nice, but I'm really surprised with these Tektro Orions and they work. Uh, the bars, not complaining there. I really love the stem. Now, the fork is amazing. I love this RockShox Recon fork. It really works well. And with the 27 and a half inch wheel size, you do get 150 mils of travel up front here, which is perfect. As far as the wheels and the tires go, cannot complain there even though these are, these are double wall alloy wheels but these schwable tires and these 2.6 are just phenomenal i love these things been putting them to the test they're just awesome the tapered head tube that's going to allow you to change out any tapered steer or the any of the modern tapered forks and it's just going to match up perfectly for that that fsa headset works great so far i love the transax dropper post the recon deluxe plus the recon deluxe select plus rear shock works phenomenal i am a big fan of this thing with that true lockout it's really nice the shimano gear set and crank set all the way around the whole drivetrain just works really great i love the threaded bottom bracket right there and it does have the hollow design bottom bracket so it's going to reduce weight and this thing just looks great the 1x12 cassette in the rear with the Shimano Dior rear derailleur works fabulous. Cannot complain there. That front chain ring works great. And overall guys, I know I keep talking this bike up, but I am super stoked that I have this bike. And you know, I strongly suggest purchasing this bike if you're looking for a $2,000 full suspension bike. This thing is just gonna be right up your alley if you're looking to get a nice trail bike. Look at that slack head tube angle. Like this thing is way out there in front. Very nice, very nice setup on this bike. All right, guys, if you like this video, please help me out on the channel by hitting the like button. Also subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. We're gonna be doing a lot of different ride videos on this Siskiyou, also upgrade videos. And if you're looking to purchase one and wanna know how to put it together, also head over to my channel page to see how to put this thing together. It's very simple and you can also do it on your own and it doesn't take that much time. Okay, thanks for watching the video, and I'll catch you guys later.